to the gathering in quarantine. Hi, Mike. Hey, Terry, how are we doing? We're doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. I am sitting in my pantry dying to see what we're doing tonight. I can see that and what a pantry it is. I can see wonderful meals in your future. <laughs> Absolutely, and help me with some ideas. Absolutely, and I want to welcome all the viewers. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. So thank you for tuning in tonight. And tonight's rather special because we're coming into the holiday season. Actually, we're in it. Yep. And not everybody gets a chance to make that quick stop at the grocery store to pick up something for dinner. So I want everybody to put your in-house ingredients to work and have a pantry freezer, fridge, dinner. And what's so special about this is that no matter what you have on hand, you can make it work. Because nowadays with Google, now y'all know I have over 600 cookbooks and I always use my cookbooks for my menus. But for something like this, you know, oh, I had three cans of this. Well, what can I put together with that? Well, you go to Google and all you do is put can cannellini beans, uh, tomatoes, water chestnuts, recipes, and you are bombarded with different recipes that hold those ingredients. So, you know, don't fret. It's going to be a busy season, but, um, you know, your pantry, freezer, or fridge will make it work for you. Yeah, I agree. With that. I find myself a lot of times seeing that I have stuff in my fridge and I look, it says, oh, this is getting ready to be done. What can I make with this? Because I don't want to throw it out. Don't want to waste the money. You know, you get a few extra, uh, like the other day I had a thing of sour cream and the date on it was yesterday. Yeah. It's like, okay, so that's a sell by date. We know the difference between sell by and expire. So I was like, this is going to go soon. What can I do with this? Yeah. And I wound up, made a casserole that I wound up using the sour cream. I love it. So I have love to it. it. And yeah. the sour, sour cream was only 89 cents, but I still didn't want to throw it out. Exactly. And you put it together with what else you had on hand. Right. right? Perfect. Yeah. So tonight, tonight's menu is what I had on hand. And we are going to have a cornucopia canned salad, porchetta porterhouse slices, spaghetti with tomatoes, mushrooms, and onions. And we're going to finish it off with pumpkin ice cream. So how does that sound? Well, it sounds fantastic. I'm actually excited about the porchetta. <laughs> that That's my favorite. I'll tell you, that uh, will be third on the menu tonight because we're going to start with the pumpkin ice cream. Okay. okay. How so are you going to do this? Have, what I have here is one cup of canned pumpkin. And hey, who didn't have a leftover can of pumpkin after Thanksgiving, right? Right. I know I did. So here, here it goes. <laughs> so we have the one cup of canned pumpkin, one cup of sugar, one cup of heavy cream, which I'm going to whip before your eyes. And then for spices, we have a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, two tablespoons of orange juice, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So the first thing we're going to do is make this whipped cream. Now, we all know I'm not a baker, right? Oh, we know that. So you have to bear with me. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, and uh, we're going to give this a go. Now, you can do this by hand, 
but I'm not doing that today. And we're just going to whip it and see what happens. And you should be able just to whip it on its own. And already I'm seeing peeps. Okay. And I am beating it on a high speed. So we're going to just keep doing that. Okay, so I'm beating this and it's getting getting a little thicker. It's getting thicker. Yep. It does take a little time. So and if you do this by hand, it would take you about five minutes. Right. Okay. So there we go. And now if I did that. not have heavy cream in my fridge to whip, but I might have some cool whip in my freezer. I might have some ready whip in my fridge that would take its place. Absolutely. And that would be even a better way to add to what you have on hand, right? right. And I happen to have heavy cream on hand because I use it for my Thanksgiving recipes. Sure. So I had it. And, and so what and so what's great about this whole thing is unlike every other week that we do a show, you do shopping. Yeah, you'd have to go out, you just pull down the, the uh, pantry and the freezer. Yep. I'm gonna awesome. the side. Let that go. No, this is thick. Okay. Yep. So that's just what we want. I have a bowl here. I'm going to put this in. Okay. So this is whipped cream. And I'm going to put this over here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to add that to the cream. And I'm going to take the sugar and add that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it all together so that it's nice and mixed. So okay. fold it. So remind people at home the folding is a nice mix mix that you do slowly in like layers more than whipping it up like you did the cream. Exactly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my spices. So I have my cinnamon, I have my ginger, I have my nutmeg, I have my orange juice, and I have my vanilla. Now, when you think of these ingredients, what does it sound like? What does it sound like to you? Well, this here, it's almost uh, sounds like some kind of, um, not a pudding, but a, um, not a pudding, but a, Maybe a pie. A pie, not a yes, like a pie, a pie filling, not a pudding. Yes. Right, right, right. So that's what this ice cream is going to be, just like. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these. And what I did was, I took out two containers because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And I think I actually like this one better. So, and you can see it's a nice thick consistency, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? So we are going to put this in here and we are going to put this in the freezer and my freezer is pretty cold. So I'm hoping by the end of the show, we will have Pumpkin ice cream, and that's all it is to it. That's it. No churning, no nothing. Okay. Because normally, when you make ice cream, you have ice, you have sugar, you have a churner, 
that whips it up in, in the sub effort, which is nice if you have kids, you get the kids involved, they do all that kind of work for you. But this here was something that you're able to mix up and put away so you can continue to cook. That is correct. That is correct. So I'm going to put this in the freezer. So I just noticed you moved the plant. Are those white poinsettias? It is. Oh, those are so pretty. It is. Yep, yep. Oh, and look what else I came across oh. in my pantry. That's a collector's item right there. It those is. Right there. It <laughs> is. It's a HCAM coffee cup, which we love. Love HCAM. Yes. So now it's on to the spaghetti. I'm going to turn up the boiling water. I had it boiling, but I turned it down. Yeah. Um, I do have my oven preheated to 400 degrees for the porchetta slices, porterhouse slices. Uh -huh. But we are going to make our sauce, okay? That's the first step with the spaghetti. And what we have for the spaghetti is, one can of diced tomatoes, one can of tomato paste, one can of mushrooms, one garlic clove chopped, we have one onion chopped, we have one tablespoon of Italian spices already mixed, so you don't have to think about it. And then we have a pound of spaghetti, you know, is this beautiful? Now, there are so many different types of spaghetti. I love spaghetti. Yeah. I don't like thin, you got angel hair, you have linguine, you have thick spaghetti. All those plain spaghetti is just seems to be like the perfect size. How about you? I love it. I love regular spaghetti. I love regular the spaghetti. I love the tube spaghetti. I love any kind, I hate to say it, but I love any kind of pasta. But I think my favorite is regular spaghetti. And I, I'm with you on that because, like you said, all the different sizes of spaghetti, spaghetti is a size of its own, and it's perfect. It perfect. is. It is. Now, angel hair is perfect for shrimp scampi or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, fresh uncooked tomato sauce with fresh tomatoes um i mean i like, I like a little sometimes I, when i make a clam sauce i mix it up but i enjoy linguine more with my clam sauce yep yep no i just put some oil in my fry pan but i have to say one of my all-time favorite spaghetti type noodles are fusilli and they're not the corkscrew they are the long spaghetti. Oh, I want. Yes. Like a squiggly. Yes. That's your true fusilli. Yes. That what? was a very good. And one of my favorite, and I'm a, I was always a ziti person. Love ziti. One of my favorite macaronis lately is the cavatapolis. Yep. The corkscrew like zitis that are like corkscrew. Yep. For some reason, those have been so good. Been it's using them in casseroles lately. Too, right? and What's that? Small. They're not big. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're this big. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to, I've got the oil going in there. I'm just going to put my olive, my olives, <laughs> <laughs> my onions and my garlic. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get those in there just to get those going. And then what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add the spaghetti to the water. Now, I love, and, and I'm not being paid to say this, but I love Barilla, okay? Because I think their pasta, all of their pasta is just wonderful. I agree, with you on, I agree with you on the Burla brand, yeah. but however, growing up in Massachusetts. Oh, yes. Well, it wasn't around back then. It was great. 
Uh, that's all you had was Prince. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I put the spaghetti in the boiling water. I set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay. And in my, I'm going to turn up the sauce a little bit so I can get that going. That's in the olive oil. And I also noticed, I have one comment and a question. The yes. first comment is, you don't break the spaghetti in half. Never. That Never. Is, that, that's almost like breaking it's the law. It's, it's breaking the law. <laughs> From so, the good my, old parochial school girl over here. Yeah. It's a sin. <laughs> now, we know how much you do not add salt to your dishes. What do you salt the water when you make your pastas? No, but you know what I put in there? Olive oil. So it doesn't stick afterwards. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, I just read lately don't do that because the spaghetti won't cling to the noodles. Right. I've never had that issue. Sure. I've never had that issue. The same way, I, I've done it both ways. Now I do not add oil to my pasta at all. However, I have been cooking with salted water. And they say the water should be salted like the ocean. <laughs> so I add, I add extra salt. And a lot of my dishes later, I will reserve some of that water before I straighten it out and add it to my sauces like when I when I make a sauce in a in a fry pan, particularly if your sauce is too thick, yes, and you need to thin it down a little bit. That's perfect. Pasta pasta water is better than just watering it down. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I've got the onions and the garlic going. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, as I've got my mic on. <laughs> um. I'm going to put my Italian spices in here and get that going. Okay, that's good. Now, I am also going to, well, that'll be two seconds. I was going to start the pork, porter house slices. Yeah. So let, me, let, me, let me ask you, you chose tonight the canned diced tomatoes. Yes. Now, if you had, I don't know, let's say plum tomatoes or, uh, or, or uh, not diced, but sliced tomatoes or, or Italian seasoned dice, you yes. could use whatever tomato you had. That's you just right. happen to chose this particular one. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it's like whatever you have on hand. Right. This was just what I had on hand. So other than to remind the people at home, you go to the YouTube channel in the descriptions, you see the recipes, and you see all the ingredients. You can waver from it. This is using the stuff in your pantry. And like myself, my, uh, oh my goodness, when I buy tomatoes, I buy all different types because oh, yes. whether I'm making a chili, whether I'm making a clam sauce, sometimes I just like, you know, yes. nice pureed tomato Absolutely. sauce. Absolutely, because you never know what you're going to need it for. Right. Exactly. So I have, right now, if you look, 15 cans of tomatoes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The plum, the half, the whole, the, everything different. Because you I never know. Absolutely. So the spaghetti is coming right along. Now, the sauce I'm going to put together now because the onions and the garlic are softened. Now you soften and you make the uh, onions translucent. Hold on one second, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you make the onions translucent. You don't want to brown them. You want to make them clear. Yep. 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 
And so I'm going to incorporate the diced tomatoes with the onions and the garlic. And then I'm going to add the mushrooms. And again, you know, you can use whatever you have on hand. You have um, artichoke hearts, throw those in there. Right. Pots of palm. I mean, right. seriously, anything you want to throw in. Right. You and, and you know me, I do not like mushrooms, but I love the flavor that the mushrooms give to any dish. Yep. Yeah, throwing in a can of mushrooms on a sauce is, is fantastic. Absolutely. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to add the tomato paste. And what this will do is thicken it up. Right. If you don't want it that thick, don't do it. Don't add it. And again, it's what you have. Right. Yeah, like like myself, I love it when a sauce will stick to the pasta. And when I was a kid, I always got the can out of fight my brother. Take <laughs> the spoon. Yeah. Oh my god, so good. Woo. Okay, so I have four minutes left on the spaghetti. I am mixing up the sauce. And once that spaghetti comes out, I'm going to strain it. I'm going to put it in the bowl over here to my right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat that again with olive oil because um, it'll keep it pliable. Right. You don't want it to stack together. And why would you like olive oil more than corn oil or vegetable oil? Uh, well, it's good for you. Yeah. And uh, I like the taste. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. You know? And, you know, all the olive oils, you have olive oil, you have virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And it all depends on the age of the olive. And that's how that works. So there is a different taste to them all. But like when you go to a restaurant, you sit down and they bring out a nice slice of Italian bread Whoa. and they bring out a plate with the olive oil. And you sit there and you oh. dip. Yeah, I was always, as a kid growing up, it was all about the Italian bread and the butter. And it wasn't until I was an adult that they drizzled the oil that was infused with like either a chili pepper or uh, fennel or all these other spices. Right. But oh my goodness, it was like, you, it was terrible because they give it to you first and then the main course comes out. It's like, I can't finish it. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you know, there is nothing like bread and butter. I'm sorry. I love butter. I'm the I'm the same way. And uh and I just learned and I being a tie that I be you're not gonna believe this, but my favorite butter that I use every day, yeah. Kerry Gold from Ireland. Oh yes, Ireland. My favorite butter. That's great. That's absolutely great. I've got one more minute on the spaghetti. And then I'm going to mix it all together. We'll put that off to the side. Then we'll get on to our porterhouse. Um, they're actually chops. They're not slices. But uh, you, you can see them having a big piece and slicing up the pork into the yeah. chop. So, So, yep. Okay, so I am going to see if I can taste one strand. Woo! <laughs> and that is hot. You know, even though I've learned how to test the texture of the pasta by using a spoon on the side of the bowl, 
there's nothing better than doing the taste test. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm going to drain my spaghetti. And always be careful when you're doing that. Right. Just here for right. A in, in one thing, I'm gonna put my fireman's hat on for a second here because you're very good at this all the time, not just on television, but on a regular basis. When you're cooking on your stove. I can't hear you at the moment. Okay. Well, I just want to remind the people when you're cooking at home and you have things on your stove, you never leave it. Don't leave to go do something else. You stick around with it and always, always have a lid for that pan you're cooking in in case a uh, fire starts in that pan, so you can cover it. But you never leave the kitchen when you cook. It, it, granted, you're on TV in front of the camera, but if you weren't, you never leave the kitchen when you cook it. You always no. stay, make sure it's done. No, yeah, okay. never do. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, that pasta looks great. Isn't that just wonderful? I'll tell you, I could eat this morning, noon, and night. Do me a favor, throw a bowl on the porch. I'll be by when we're off here. <laughs> okay, so is that beautiful? That is great. Lovely color. Yep. Nice tomatoes. Perfect. Perfect choice. Now, I've got the oven heated at 400. I am going to put my... Actually, I'm going to put it back here. I'm going to add some olive oil to my pan. And I'm going to warm this up because we are going to sear this. So I'm going to start it just to get it somewhat while I'm putting this all together. Yeah, yeah. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you exactly what I have. I have one teaspoon of granulated, and it's all granulated, so that you get a nice spice mixture to rub. We have one teaspoon granulated onion, and after I describe it, I'm gonna throw it in the bowl. Okay. We have one teaspoon granulated garlic. We have three teaspoons dried parsley. We have two teaspoons of black pepper. We have two teaspoons dried rosemary. We have two teaspoons dried thyme. Now, we also have two teaspoons of dried oregano and it calls for fennel. I didn't have fennel. Guess what I had? Yes. Yes. Oh. Same thing. Yeah. Pretty much. Same licorice taste. Right. And then one teaspoon of salt. I'm going to move this over here. Now, then, if I, now, if I didn't have fennel, I could leave that out. Not yeah. Because we're using what we have in mm -hmm. our cupboards, in our pantries. Absolutely. So with my hands, because I'm going to be using my hands yep. to do this, and then I have to wash my hands, so forgive me of that. Um, what I'm going to do is, oh, and this smells divine. Oh, I bet. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I'm going to pour a quarter on each side. And aren't these beautiful? They're Those nice and thick. Porterhouse pork chops. Yep. Turn it over. Now that's something you can get at any grocery store. That's oh, not a butcher thing. shop thing. Already. Yeah. Already cut, packaged, ready to go. Yep. And so I'm going to, and this is kind of like cheating on a porchetta, right? 
because the porchetta, you spice it, and then you, you roll it up it. and tie it up. Roast it. Yeah. So we're gonna sear this, and then we're going to bake it, and we're gonna quick it, bake it quick, 400 degrees, 10 minutes. Okay. So now I'm going to take this. And I'm going to kind of just make sure. Now, isn't that beautiful? That's We're awesome. Going to coat it. Yeah. Right. And even the sides, the fat. You wanna, you wanna do that. I'm gonna throw this in the pan. And you wanna quick sear it. Okay. So maybe two minutes on each side. Now, and I explain why you sear it. So that you can put a crust on the outside so that when it goes into the oven, it finishes cooking, but you get that nice crustiness. It continues on the outside and the inside is just... Uh, it, it also helps hold juices in. Yes, exactly. Excellent. I'm going to wash my hands now, Mike, if you don't mind. Okay, we're going to get all that off. Got to make sure because when you're dealing with raw meat, you don't want to transport any of those germs. Right. Because that's how you. And, and as all the people watch your show, you talk a lot about the care to not cross contaminate when you're using raw meats to a vegetable, to a dessert, to whatever. You you show off washing your hands more than you see on regular television. <laughs> well, well it's, right. it, that's, a, that's an important thing to add. It's just yeah. like it's just like why. If you use a wooden cutting board for poultry, you're not going to use that same cutting board for beef. That's you're right. Move it to something else. Cross contamination is a problem. Even though you're cooking everything, you still have a chance to have some contamination. Yep, I agree, totally. So, other thing you could do with those with the uh, pork chops. I love the word pork chops. I like, know, I know. You are going for the 10 minute cook because it's an hour program, but you could also slow cook those. Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. Like, 325 oven. Yes. For a nice hour, hour and a half. I do the same thing. When you're not in a hurry, you got things to do, and you're not in a hurry, nice slow cooking, any kind of beef, pork, whatever in the oven is fantastic. Okay, now I just turned, I just turned them. I'm gonna put a little more olive oil in here. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to lift it so that the bottom can get that nice oily coating. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. 400 after searing it for a few minutes. I'm going to let them go a little longer and because I really like that crusty feeling. Sure. sure. Um, that crustiness on the outside. I'll turn sure. them over one more time. So, but um, they're going into the 400 degree oven. Right. So uh, it'll cook quick. It says 10 minutes. But again, you know, it's pork, so you want to make sure it's it's cooked well right. enough. Absolutely. So I noticed in your kitchen, and I'm doing this for our viewers, you like cooking in stainless or cast iron or whatever, but not so much nonstick. Well, um, and whatever. You know, I definitely use nonstick. I do have a couple of nonsticks. Right. No, I'm saying in general, like that big pan like that, a lot of times a nice stainless or cast iron seems to be better to cook those kind of meats. Cast iron, I absolutely love. 
the thing with the cast iron, when I get it going on my stove, I get smoky. Within yeah. The yeah. So I have to be careful when I do it. Um, and again, you know, I could put the fan on and it would work, but um, not tonight. Of course, because, yeah, we're trying to keep the sound down. And in my little kitchen, which is smaller than yours, <laughs> when I cook, sometimes my fan doesn't catch it all. It seems like the fan is more back than my stove front. And sure enough, my smoke detector is in the kitchen, and it loves to go off every time. Even though I'm not burning, I'm cooking things the right way. And yeah. it's, it's really hard. But the having a cast iron you know you have to know how to treat your pans oh you do like a cast iron pan you don't put soap on it uh -huh. you clean with water you scrape it and then you oil it up and put it away and a lot of people will choose the cast iron i mean the uh the non-sticks but when they use the wrong utensils in them and you start scraping that non-stick oh. It's not healthy for you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, Mike. So that's why we love to choose the stainless, which is great. Yeah, you burn a little sometimes. That's okay. But that's what they make Brillo pads for, right? <laughs> Sounds good. Now I'm going to yeah. put them in the pan. Yeah. So they go into the oven. But I will show you before I put them in. Look at these. Wow, those are great. Those look like over a pound a piece, right? Oh, yeah. Those are great. So I'm going to put these in the oven again, 400. It says 10 minutes, but I'll tell you what. I'm going to do again because we like, well, I won't say we. Some of us like well done. <laughs> I'm going to put 15. Right. Now, everyone says when you deal with pork because pigs eat garbage or whatever, that it has to be well done. And that's not true. Right. When you have a nice cut of pork, pork loin or, or those, it's nice to have a little pink in them. A little bit. A little. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it, it keeps everything nice and juicy. But when you have like, and I'm going to use the typical pork chop on the bone that's sliced at, you know, less than half an inch or whatever, those, yeah, you cook through. Yeah. But when you have a nice pork loin or something like that, you want to have just a little pink in it. Yeah. So you have to watch your temperature. Do you ever cook with a thermometer when you're cooking big pieces of meat you do absolutely so how did you like the name of my next dish cornucopia cam salad by the way that's mine <laughs> well, yeah but when, when <laughs> the first thing i saw when you sent me your menu which thank you for getting all this uh, stuff in advance Cornucopia is a great way to follow off of our Thanksgiving dinner. Yep, yep. But it's so, also a wonderful a potpourri of things. Things that I would never think about mixing together for a salad. So you, I'm, I want to see. But I'm going to tell you, what we have here is going to be a very interesting salad. All individual tastes with very light dressing itself, because you've got these flavors going on. Right. And we have one can of diced beets, one can of sliced water chestnuts, one can of cannellini beans. Cannellini, you right? say cannellini. <laughs> That's right. One can of whole kernel corn, and for the dressing, we have two tablespoons of vinegar, two tablespoons of olive oil, and one teaspoon of dried parsley. Now, I'm going to mix everything together in this bowl. 
okay, to get it all together. Now you can you can see with the with the water chestnuts, you're gonna get that nice crunch. Yes. You get the beans, nice subtle flavor, a nice turkey flavor with the diced beets, and then the sweet corn, right? I mean, how different is this? Now, now, did you cook that corn ahead of time, or was that right out of the can? Oh, right out of the can, not cooked. Nice. Yeah. Whatever. Nothing is cooked. When you sent me the uh, menu and I saw this salad, I saw everything that I liked. Yeah. The beets, yeah. one chest like the beans and the corn. Yeah. I never imagined them together. That's the thing, right? Which is amazing. It is. And you want to keep the fun and the interest for your family. Sure. Every day, simple ingredients can be turned into something special. Now I'm going to add the dressing ingredients. Again, very light. And then I'm going to give this a nice toss. Yeah, because this is one of those salads that need the dressing in the whole salad. I'd like keep the uh, dressing separate. Uh-huh, exactly. Right. Exactly, and you can see the beets are already turning the water chestnuts a little pink. Yeah, yeah. And wow. even, even this smells great. I gotta tell you. So I am going to now transport it into this really interesting serving container, right? That is an interesting looking bowl. <laughs> because not only do I'm gonna pop that in my mouth with this? Very good. Not only is it a very different salad, I want to showcase it in a different container. Right. Okay. So that's an incredible looking thing. Yeah. So now. We've got, um, it's quarter of eight. Yeah. We've got the Porchetta Porterhouse chops in the oven. And I think I can open this baby up. I think it's time. Oh, you go with white, which I knew was gonna be white tonight. Yeah. Now you could do red. You could do right. Zinfandel. Right. You, you could get away with the red because of the pork in the in the pasta without a doubt, but I knew you were going to go with white. Yeah, yeah. And it's a Sauvignon Blanc. I like my dry wine. You love the dry, yes. Yeah. Um, so we'll just do that. And I'm just going to toast H. Kim ahead of time because I'm going to take a sip. To, to H. Kim, yes. There you go. So, um, while we have a few minutes, I'll get this out of the way. While we still have a few minutes, we can talk about the upcoming holiday. Yes. So we have Hanukkah coming up, then we have Christmas and Kwanzaa, right? Yep. And Festivus for the rest of us, but. That's for all our Seinfeld fans. <laughs> yeah. So the the meals, I mean, it, you, you like myself, being Italian, Christmas Eve was the seven fishes, and still is mine. Still is, yeah. And I was never into that because you know how much I'm not a huge seafood fan. Yeah. I love it and I try it, whatever, but. The flavors that come out this time of year from everybody, because our melting pot is getting bigger and bigger. You know, I'm eating Indian food, I'm eating, you know, Thai food, I, or whatever. It's great that you're able to sample so much over the holidays in tradition. You gotta love tradition. Absolutely. 
absolutely. There, there's things that you have to have. You have to, and every ethnic ethnicity, ethnicity, yeah. Ethnicity. Sometimes I have trouble saying it. They all have their own traditions. Yeah. I enjoy. One of the big things, and it happens every year, and nobody could do it as well as my Uncle Mickey, rest his soul, was the chestnuts. Oh, roasted chestnuts. We used to have it roast our chestnuts. My dad. He was, the, he was the only guy that could make them right. Okay. And it was like a science, and nobody ever tried. After his passing, we tried many, many times. Sometimes they're okay, sometimes they weren't. I'm gonna tell you, Mike, you still have to keep trying it. Oh, and we do. It, 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 it's hilarious because as soon as they come out of the oven, everyone tries them. And it was like burning their fingers, burning their mouths. Because you know how good they are when they're so hot. But it's one of those things that we continue to do. Absolutely. And just like the little Italian candies that come in that cardboard yeah. box. Uh, or the ribbon candies for us Italians. That's my goal. The, the, the nougats. The nu yes, the nougats. Oh, my goodness. So everyone has their own thing. My go-to when we think about Christmas, we think about the ravioli dinner. Yes. Oh. That's our thing. And all the other things are nice, whether it's the ribbon candy, the nougats, uh, the pit, I guess that's right, because help me, we did this. Pizzazelles, the Pizzazelles. Pizzazelles. Yeah. Those, you know, all those little things are nice to have. Absolutely. Yeah. And they were always traditions in our house. Right. Growing up and, and after. Um, if you like chestnuts, you have to try chestnut, roasted chestnut stuffing. We've had Chestnuts in our stuffing before. I ate it once and it was amazing. I love chestnuts. Chestnuts are the best. Yeah, yeah. Best. You know, you're you're in the city, New York, Boston, you walk around, you get a cone of them, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Or a bag. Oh, without a doubt, it's it's it is so good. It you know, when you think about the families getting together to cook, which, you know, COVID put a damper on our Thanksgivings this year. And it's doing the same thing for our Christmases this year. Yeah. But when you get together, you have that little bit, or now it's maybe time to try something new. You know, maybe, uh, do we do something different now? Because 2020 was such a... Why not? It was such a, a train wreck or a dumpster fire, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Why not try something new this year? That's right. I'm all box. for it. Yeah. All for it. Now, yeah. I'll do my, for Christmas, I'll do my standard prime rib roast, roasted potatoes, my broccoli mold, my carrots, my string beans. I'll do my cheesecake. But now this year, I'm thinking I'm going to do a side pan of stuffed shells because Chelsea loves them. Haven't seen her in a year. Oh, so she coming home for Christmas? Yes. With Ben and Cooper. Excellent. And um, so I'm just so excited. To Can you post it? I want to stop by and say hello. Yeah, truly. I haven't seen, I haven't seen you guys forever. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> So long, so long. Oh my goodness. 2021 is right around the corner. Oh. And you know, it so, will be better. It will be it, better no matter what it is, because we all have more knowledge about this virus. We're all being safe. It's, you know, it is what it is. Now, you'd like to think at some point we're going to get back to normal, you know? Um, because honestly, I can't see it being like this forever. I just can't. I, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Yeah. But, you know, it's nice to know that we're doing everything. Like, you know, I'd be over there with you in a heartbeat Absolutely. over the show right now. I 
do. I do we know do, that. We are doing the responsible thing by doing it remotely. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we have to do until we put this under control. That's it. And to be honest with you, to know that I can put this show on like we're doing it, I cannot tell you how much I love it. I mean, look, I, I love the regular gathering show. Look, look how much time you saved editing. I know. It takes <laughs> to edit those. And then it's like, well, okay, well, how soon are we all going to get back to dinner parties? I don't think all, right. all that. So this is going to be continued. I have to say, Mike, now I'll take a little time off for the holidays. Sure. But I will be back most likely um, after my next show. I most likely will be back the beginning of February. I, I was we'll just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Right? Nice winter cooking. Uh, pre Valentine's Day. Yeah, you know, it like like you said, you miss the the little parties because the social the social circle that you have are all the people I know. Yes, <laughs> and to be a part of that is missed. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's like it's like let, let's say it's a year from today. We're having the big social party, whatever. All of us there, like pick off, pick up where we left off. It's that kind of friendship. It's it's those kind of people, and the food that you bring us all together with is incredible. It it just gives us something to talk about. It gives us memories. Yeah. You know, oh my goodness, the memories. You know, remember, memories a lot. The, one of my favorite memories were when you were doing the party with your commuter friends. <laughs> yes, my train gang. Your train gang. And you weren't ready. They were all there and you weren't ready. And you put them all to work building the appetizers and the champagne glasses. Oh, oh my goodness. It was, yeah, so much that fun. was so much fun. That was an impromptu gathering. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've had them to at least three shows. Um, and that was so much fun. That oh, was. that was that was the best. Because you, you brought everybody into it. Look at this, Mike. I, I'm going to say, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. So again, here, we have our porchetta porterhouse slices chops. We have spaghetti with tomatoes, mushrooms, and onions. Yep. And then we have our cornucopia corn salad, canned salad, and then our pumpkin ice cream. And I have to just take... Now oh, yeah, try it. This will take a little more time in the fridge, but... My God, that is really good. Yeah, that can go because everyone's going to eat the salad and, and the rest of the food, so that can come out later. Absolutely. So there you have it. Right now, look at this. What a wonderful meal just out of the pantry, the freezer, and the fridge. That's, right? a, that's a fantastic idea. I, I tell you, we need to come back and do more shows like this. Yes. You know, it, it, it's amazing and, and how you pull this all off. It's like you didn't have to worry about running to the price chopper or anywhere else to get the food. This is all stuff you had ready to go. Exactly. I That's love it. I love it. And again, it's just being creative with what you have on hand. So get creative. Your family will love it. Welcome to the holiday season. And uh, we're all going to be off and running, right? That's right. You got anything uh, to tease uh, for two weeks? Uh, not Don't sure. give it away. Don't give it away. Just tease. Not sure. No. I might, now, you know how, how my mind works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. So it's like, um, I'm not sure right yet. I do have a couple of ideas kicking around, but um, nothing that I fell upon. So, so we, we're going to see colorful? Um, I would like to think it's 
a lot of times colorful. Okay. Yeah. But you know, one thing I really do want to do at one of these shows, I want to make a fa. A what? A fa. Which is Vietnamese soup. And it's spelled P-H-O. Most people mispronounce it as pho. Oh, yeah. Pho. And it is, you go to any Vietnamese or Thai place, you'll see pho. There's, there's, there's pho restaurants in Framingham on Route 9. And it's, you get the big bowl of soup and uh, all many different varieties, but that's one of my favorite, favorite soups to put together. And that's perfect for the winter because it's spicy and it, it, it warms you up, has Excellent. everything in it. So we'll do a show on that most likely, but that, that's for 2021. Which is gonna be a lot better than this year. Yes. Yes, most definitely. Awesome. Well, Terry, nice job on tonight. Gathering all that stuff out of the pantry, fridge and freezer. And uh, I can't wait to see the menu when you send it to me next week. <laughs> well, you know, I, I always look forward to putting it together. I can't wait to do that because the preparation is half the fun. And of course, then you have making it and then serving it. Right. But the first half is the preparation and the planning, which I really love. So um, I love it. I'm excited for that. And I just want to thank everybody. And I want to thank you all for joining and uh, off and running, right? Yes. Yeah. I can't wait. All right, Terry, thank you again. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in two weeks. See you next time. Bye-bye.